Hello, StarCraft fans! This is Falco Paladin coming to you with yet another daily Legacy of the Void upload, and today it's going to be a best of five between Neeb and a laser, starting here on Neon Violet Square, the latter edition. This is from WCS Leipzig that wrapped up a couple of weeks ago. And let's get right on into it. In game number one, in the top left-hand corner on Neon Violet Square, we have the red Protoss player. It is Neeb! From the Team Ting. As far as I know, the only player on Team Ting and hailing from the United States of America. And in the bottom right-hand corner, from Poland, he is one of the most terrifying Zergs on the face of planet Earth. It's going to be the blue Zerg player, Elazer. Oh, man. Elazer versus Neeb in a best of five. Are you kidding me right now? Is this going to be one of the best series I ever cast? I want to say it is. I want to say that it is. Although I did cast what I labeled an epic best of five about a month ago. Oh, who even was in that? My brain is going, you guys. I've got three kids and a full-time job and a wife and a home to take care of and a channel to keep up. And my brain cells are rapidly decaying. But I'll be here. I'll be here until the last person turns off the lights. Even if I am just trying to senile cast StarCraft 2, which may happen sooner rather than later. Anyway, I think it was, was it Gumio? I want to see it was Gumio versus a Zerg player. Gumio versus Rogue, perhaps? I don't know. Somebody knows in the comments. They'll tell me, and I'll link to it. I'll link to it up in the top right here. How about that? All right, so a ZVP best of five. My favorite matchup. Haven't been casting enough ZVP recently, I feel like. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just my own biases coming into play here. But anyway, ZVP just has a lot of variety to it. You got Archons and High Templar and Ultralisks are fine and Lurkers are good and Mutas are good and Broodlords are good. And just every unit, it seems like, in both of these races' arsenal are viable under certain circumstances. You just don't have anything that's off the table, which is what I love. I love it so much. Whereas Terran has units that just really aren't useful in some situations and same with Protoss against other races. But against Zerg, everything's good. I feel like there's nothing here that Neeb just has completely removed from his hotkey list, right? And said, this is going to be of no use to me against a laser today. Everything. Tempest, even, against Broodlords. Amazing. Dark Templar, too. I'm just going through the whole list of Protoss units right now, and everything's good. Everything is good. Nothing's just flat out bad. It's going to be Stargate opening here from Neeb. I have refreshed my Oracle list, so we're ready to go. Even if Neeb opens... Five straight games with Oracle. We have enough names on the list, but I'll be pretty low after that. So any Oracle names you want to suggest, feel free to do so in the comments below. Just open with the name Oracle. Well, with the word Oracle. Scouting this with the Sloverlord is a laser because it was an adept opening from Neeb, and he can't do anything about Sloverlord scouting his stuff. But, you know, I'm sure a laser is not at all surprised by this. Lings and Queen trying to get us around on that adept can't quite do it. Adept does scout that third base as it's coming up. Says, all right, nothing too crazy here from a laser. No, no two base, Roach, Ravager, all in type things. Don't have to worry about that one at all. So Oracle coming out. Oracle's name is going to be Noodle. When she awoke, the Protoss had harnessed her for her lust for blood to fight their opponents. And Noodle enjoys her new position. But will she ever be returned to her friends? I don't know who Noodle is. Is that a reference to a TV show of some kind? Perhaps. Perhaps. I try to keep up on that stuff. My pop culture knowledge is good. I don't know what Noodle's talking about though so again in the comments let me know it's gonna be two oracles it's gonna be two oracles uh, maybe we should get back to oracle pairings we had those for a while and then they protoss kind of stopped doing oracle pairings and i don't know maybe they should come back anyway we've got noodle noodle flying on in gonna try to get rid of some of these workers there's nothing at the third base laser recognizing the third base drones would be entirely unprotected so not going to saturate until there are a couple queens here to defend noodle says rats Laser is too smart. He's too smart to just leave drones out for easy pickings. Uh, Overlord scouting everything that Neeb is doing. Neeb doesn't care, man. I mean, he's got a phoenix on the way. He's going to kill it eventually. But he's got his robotics facility getting tossed down at this stage of the game. Two adepts trying to come in. There's lings and queens, and they cancel that transfer. But double oracle, pretty darn scary stuff. Swinging on in. There's a spore crawler and a queen. But again, you need more than this to stop oracles from murdering your stuff. Four drones do go down. Not enough to pay for Noodle and her friend, but still enough to put the fear of Protoss into Elazer just a little bit. Yeah, there's our Sloverlord scouting, and he does scout the Twilight Council too. Man, Elazer sees everything Neeb is trying to do here in game number one. Hmm. Third Nexus, warping in down south for Neeb. No big surprise there either. A couple of dubs hanging out 
in the pachinko ping pong area of the map. Well, one of two of those, actually. Actually, how many are there? One, two, three. There's at least three. That one? No, just the three. Just the three. Oh, it's the Phoenix Double Oracle play that Showtime loves to do. A laser trying to pull this off now. You lift the queen and then come in and start killing stuff. And Spore Crawler can't kill these dudes fast enough. Oh, the drones are going down. Six more going down there. We've got Oracle with four kills. We've got Oracle with six kills. That is ten drones killed thus far. That's probably worth a couple Oracles. Plus, this Phoenix is killing another Overlord, which is fantastic. It's 53 to 56 Harvesters. A laser is up, but not by as much as he was previously. The laser is working on muscular augments. This is a 4.0.2 series, which means muscular augments is one upgrade instead of two separate ones, one for range and one for speed. But I'm sure Neeb's okay with that. He can live. Temple Archives coming in here for Neeb, warping in quite nice. The Revelation thrown down here at the third base. Ling scouting the third base location too. Immortals are out for Neeb. Working on shield battery. He does like the shield battery. Neeb does. Also Showtime does. Protoss in general seem to like the shield battery. If they're going to take away photon overcharge from us, then shield battery is the replacement, and I suppose we'll use it. It's not so bad we're going to refuse to use it and boycott it, which has been done by players in the past. I mean, they basically nerfed Disruptor into the ground in 4.0.2. Players like M. Canning, who live for the Disruptor, unbound Disruptor from his hotkeys. He said, no, I'm not using this state of Disruptor. Oh, three drones transferring to the natural base get burned. Burned up by these oracles. More, wow, more drones going down. Noodle almost dies. No, Noodle. Good job. Six kills and one hit point. <laughs> one hit point on her. And it's time for an attack. The laser says, I am tired of being defensive here. Oh, he's getting a fourth base. And going to knock down some of this debris before he attacks, but perhaps he'll move out at the... I don't know. What's... What? Plus one attack is done. Right around there. Seven, eight minutes seems to be where it is. Overseer gets another scout. Did scout that Neeb is planning to take his pocket expansion here for his fourth base location. The laser has not done that yet. His bottom right expansion on this map is entirely untaken and unscouted by him. A warp prism and Cyanic Storm being researched by Neeb right now. A lot of stuff going on. Warping in High Templar. Going to be for that storm and some Archons too. Um, don't dismiss Archon play. They're pretty darn tanky, and they do really well against Zerglings. And Hydras, if they can get close enough to them. The thing with Hydras is they're fast enough with Muscular Augments, and especially on Creep, to just kite your Archons indefinitely because their attack range is much shorter than the Hydralisks are. So, you know, game one, you're just kind of hanging out, I suppose, is what we're all about right now. Fourth base is done for a laser, just making more and more Hydralisks, as Hydras are pretty much the staple of Zerg these days. I mean, he's trying to scout in that third base and say, whoop, there's an army there. I mean, it's Immortals. We're good against Immortals, but not if there are ten of us and four Immortals. The odds are still not good. Not great. Lurker eggs for a laser. Morphing, hatching on the creep. Revealed. Which is why the Immortal count is so high for Neeb. We've seen this. We've seen this before. Protoss players with a sufficient number of Immortals will wreck Lurkers. Just absolutely destroy them. Tear them from the ground. And kill them. Charge lots? Uh, indeed they are. Charge lots trying to come in here to this third base location, but there might be enough lings and hydras to shut that thing down. Yeah, they're retreating as an attack comes in from a laser. The revelation from these oracles has been spot on, though. A laser can't move across the map. Disguised or invisible or under the cover of night at all. Yeah, these alts are all dead, though. The laser leaving behind a little defensive force. And here we go, Immortal Old Storm chasing away those lings quite nicely. Quite nicely. Oh, great storm again, right on top. <laughs> oh, it's a perfect composition from Neeb. He's got the Immortals, he's got the storm. The Hydras really get eaten by that storm. Doesn't one shot them, it does take them down to 10 HP. And the Lurkers without Hydra support especially are just destroyed by those Immortals. Spire, Infestation Pit coming in for a laser right now. Double Oracle, look out, it's the Hydros, and they do manage to escape. Noodle and friends do manage to escape, and every time Neve gets close enough to a laser or vice versa, there are storms getting tossed down. Neve has a lot of High Templar, and with his army right now, six of them. Four of them with enough energy for a storm, it looks like, although this guy, close. He's close, he'll be there. He'll be there for the next attack. Fifth base coming in for a laser. Warping, nope, morphing in at the gold base here, just outside of his main and down a cliff. And here comes a laser again. Once again, the revelation has just been spot on. He knows exactly where this army is at all times. Hydras, lurkers, trying to burrow in here. Revelation is on top of this army too. And the Archons in the front doing a lot of work, but the Immortals in the back are really what needs to happen. 
here for Neve, and look at these lurkers getting target fired. Lurkers just getting bam, bam, pounded, pounded, and killed here. Elazer still trying to push on in. I don't know exactly why he's doing this with the handful of units that he has. But I guess reinforcements are coming in here. Storms too, but still storms remaining. These immortals, five kills, eight kills, zero kills on you, nine kills there. Again, trying to push, but it's just. I don't know. I don't think it's really working for this handful of Hydralisks. There, meanwhile, a bit of a zealot attack here at the third base of the laser. Again, cleaned up by Hydras and Wings and Queens, as a laser has been able to do so far throughout this game. Reinforcing units, Hydras streaming, Lings streaming, but retreating. Now is a laser as Neeb manages to warp in his fifth base location as he has his pocket expansion. Nice and safe and sound. So we're five base in it to five base ish right now for Neeb. He's down. A little bit. He actually might have to cancel this. These lings are mean. They don't have any attack upgrades, but with a Hydra support too, this is going to be a cancel. Ugh, just barely. Just barely gets that cancel. Storm again chasing away this Hydra army, and lurkers just keep dying. Seven lurkers have been killed so far, and there are only five left. So, I mean, Neeb's been picking these guys off like they're made of the paper mache's mothership. Coming in for Neeb. Why does it keep moving? Stop moving production tab. There it is. There's your mothership coming from the main nexus back in the main. It's going to force a cancel on this fifth base again. Looks like he is. Meanwhile, an attack of Wings and Hydras coming into this third base too. No, no cancel on the fifth base. And the Storm's chasing away a laser's attempt at harassing the third base too. They're just too good. Too many Storms. Too many Immortals right now. Missile attack level two being researched. Chasing back this army again, still attacking at the third base need, holding as best he can. Only Immortals remaining, and this Oracle, which doesn't have the energy, I don't think, for what it needs to do with Pulsar Beam. There's the revelation. He's detection more than anything else. Ling's trying to distract the Immortals from taking out the Lurkers. Lurkers are retreating. They know this is bad. They know Immortals in their front door are bad news. Plus two attack on those guys, and the fourth base is forced to be canceled there. Fifth base, rather, forced to be canceled again. From Neeb, I don't know if he actually canceled that, but regardless, it is gone. Elazer's done a great job keeping that fifth base from coming up thus far, but does it really matter? Neeb has absolutely been masterful holding this off thus far. More and more shield batteries here from Neeb at the third base location. Elazer's coming in for round five of this attempt to kill this base. Before the shield batteries come up, he recognizes he has a bit of a time here where he can make this happen. Hydra's out killing a couple shield batteries. Those blanket storms, though, forcing splits. Another shield battery does go down. Feedback on an overseer, too. Six bases done before a laser. He's expanding behind all of this pressure right now. Shield battery, another one. Oh, almost dead, but those storms just keep coming, and they don't stop coming. The laser doesn't care. As long as his Hydra still have any HP, they're still doing a lot of damage. Attack speed, crazy high. Plus two attack is done. But forced away because, look, Mothership and no detection for a laser. Mothership stabbing away at a speedy lord there. Broodlords in production for a laser. Remember what I said about Broodlords and Tempests? Definitely could be a thing. This is so many High Templars. That is 10 High Templar that Neeb has with this army right now. 10 High Templar, a handful of Immortals to deal with the three Lurkers that a laser has remaining. He's given up on Lurkers entirely, going into Broodlords now. Uh, carriers in production for Neeb back home. An attack on this fifth base again. Just a single lurker from a laser. Not a big deal. Does he manage? Oh, he doesn't escape. He does not manage to escape at all. Zerglings running all over the place. Willy nilly, pell mell, trying to see what they can find. And the answer is not much. There are no bases to find up in the north section of the map here, which is probably good for a laser. He's feeling pretty excellent about that. Resources lost at this point 14,000 for Neeb and 20,800. For a laser. Quick pause. We don't have to endure that because this is being cast from replay. Oh, free immortal. Almost a free immortal. But Zealots and the rest of the army coming out of nowhere to protect their Protoss brethren. Is there a sixth base down here? Your laser says no. Neeb is not expanding. And I'm making sure that he's not expanding at all. Zealots with plus three attack and charge running around trying to find these Zealots. Get them out of the neighborhood. They're just troublemakers. Those wings are oh, the High Templar. I'm almost getting surrounded there, but did those lings all die? Those lings all died to that storm. The storm micro, the storm reaction time from Neeb has been masterful, just incredibly good thus far in the game. I know I've been saying masterful a lot, but boy, Neeb looks great right now. Elazer is super scary too. I mean, the amount of pressure he's been able to put on didn't actually kill Neeb though, mind you. 
but he hasn't had to really defend that much either back home. Okay, the Broodlords are out. Neeb says, oh, my army is not great against Broodlords. I have a carrier and a mothership. And uh, I don't think it's going to be enough. He'll kill the fifth base, though. The gold base is down. Zealots running into the third base, killing a lot of drones depth there as well. Storms on top of the Hydras, trying to get rid of... Wow, trying to get rid of the mothership, but not really working out too well as Storm's continuing to hold these Hydralisks off. They really just want to kill this mothership. He's got three kills already. Corruptor's getting shots off here too. Broodlord's killing the stuff on the ground, but this third base by a laser is entirely dead. Goodbye, third base. It was darn near nice knowing you. Oh, Immortal's getting caught on the ground a little bit there. Finally getting killed by the Broodlings who've been trying to kill them for so long right now. Mothership just retreating. Zealots here at a laser's fourth base. The third base completely falls. Actually forced to come home with a few of his Hydras. Trying to handle this thing. Zel uh, Zerglings popping out to help too. Hydras and the Broodlords trying to finish off these Immortals. Do they have detection? No, they don't have detection. And there's the recall anyway. Neve decides to get out of there. Recall back to third base? Yeah, third base. Recalling back to the third base. 171 to 166 total supply. Neve is up. Whew. Neeb is up. A laser replanting his fifth gold base and his third base location as a good player will do. Is immediately replant those bases as soon as it's safe to do so. And trying to attack into this fifth base location with Lings and Corruptors and Hydras. I don't know if it's enough. I really don't think it's enough. And once again, forced back. The Broodlords are here. Raining down Broodlings on top of those Archons. And the splash damage against the Broodlings is pretty good. But remember, Broodlings are free units. So it doesn't cost a laser anything to throw these things out here. And Neeb might have to give up his fifth base right now. I don't know that he has enough to stop this. His carrier group is looking pretty good, but the Corruptor group for a laser in response is also fairly amazing right now. Storm on top of the Hydras, Broodlings raining down. Destruction upon this fifth base location. Storms on top of all of the Broodlings though. Archon's trying to get close enough to actually hit the Broodlords themselves. Doing okay with it. Not doing too badly with it. But finally forced to abandon the 5th base. Zealots going after Elazer's 6th base, forcing the drones to run from there. And this gold base might go down again to these Zealots. But the 5th base explodes in the gout of blue flame that we know and have seen so many times. It's just a great animation. I like it very much. And killing that base is enough for Elazer. He pulls back to try to do with these Zealots that are actually oh, almost got that extractor and then decided not to, retreating to their deaths instead, I guess. Up oh, free Hydra. Free Hydra. Six base is done for Neeb at the gold. I'm not sure that a laser knows about this. He does not know about this. Actually. And finally, the Zealots on a laser side of the map are cleaned up. They did a lot of work in the meantime. Still kind of hanging out by where that fifth base was are these Broodlords, but the anti is not very good. There are some queens that have waltzed all the way up here to try to transfuse the Broodlords and keep them alive, but the Hydra count is not exactly enough, I don't think, to deal with this carrier count. As it stands, are they trying to focus down the Broodlords or the Hydras? The Hydras getting right on top of these carriers, though, and they really want to take down the Mothership, but I don't think they can. Mothership is too fast, man. 2.62 move speed. It doesn't sound that fast, but when you fly over cliffs and stuff, it's pretty nice. Time warp slowing down the Hydras. Mothership finally ends up falling there. Argons getting right under the Broodlords, which is exactly where they want to be. And they managed to take out one of them, two more of them, and one more fleeing with four kills. It does explode under the onslaught, and Neeb holds just barely. He does barely hold. Oh, Lurker takes out an Archon. That must have been very low on shields as it stood there. So fifth base getting replanted by Neeb. All the six bases of a laser are up and fully functional right now. It's 54 to 69 Harvesters, though. Uh, 34,000 resources lost for Neeb and 44,000 lost for Elazer. <sighs> Ironically, Terran music is playing, even though it is a PvZ, but that's okay. I like the Terran music. It's nice. Six, uh, seventh base? Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seventh base, warping in for Neeb up north. Single Lurker trying to take down this fifth base warp in, but no, enough of the carrier. And Void Ray Group is there to say, no, not, not really allowed. It turns out here, Hydra versus Void Ray. Hydra has the advantage there, but man, look at these guys go. What are the armor stats? The Hydras have no armor upgrades, which seems not ideal. We're trying to make Hydras work here. Storms chasing the Hydras away. Again, they don't eat the entire storm, but it does force them to retreat, which is what Neeb wants right now. His fifth base needs to finish in peace. 
He doesn't want a laser to be the aggressor here in game number one. More zealot attacks at the third base of a laser. This guy, I mean, it's one zealot, but he's got uh, six kills. A lot of dead drones. All by his alone. Some lings rolling on into the mineral line. <laughs> his fifth base and killing a couple probes. Or zero probes. Actually, that's a total of zero probes dead. Zealots at the sixth base of a laser, too. Hmm. Seventh base, seventh base down here at the south. Oh, and that's a good game. Well played. Wow. Taps out at 20 minutes. Did not have enough to handle what was coming from Neeb. Didn't have enough. End of the game there. He had seven Hydras and a, and a Queen and some Zerglings. Whereas Neeb's army wasn't massive by any stretch, but it was still five carriers, two Archons, a Void Ray, a High Templar, 12 Zealots, and four Immortals. Saw the writing on the wall. Was down to 45 workers to 68 compared to his opponent, and that was it. So that's game one. Great job by Neeb. Just holding back consistent aggression from a laser over and over and over again. And then finally the counterattack manages to happen. Zealot attacks going all throughout. Just did not e let a laser rest at all. And he takes game one. So let's see if Neeb can get game two here. Take a very nice early lead in game number two. We'll be back with more from Falcon Paladin in just a second. Welcome back, StarCraft fans, to this best of five between Elazer and Neeb. Game number two will be on Catalyst, the latter edition, and let's introduce these excellent players. In the bottom right-hand corner of the map, we've got the red Protoss player. It is Neeb. And in the top left-hand corner, the blue Zerg player, Elazer. Woo! That game one was close. I feel like a laser was close to breaking through two or three or four times there, but need just enough storm, enough immortal, enough archon, enough shield battery to get up his carrier group that a laser did not have an answer for, and he managed to win that thing. That whole series, if this whole series is going to be like game number one, we are in for a treat. This may very well be an epic series to be sure. All right, what are we doing here on Catalyst? Going for the gateway first is Neeb Gateway Expand, as is tradition, and it's going to be hatch first out of a laser. So he doesn't subscribe to the Snoop theory of going pool first, making a hundred million queens, and then doing something after that. Uh, I suppose it's not as viable against Protoss, just because there are a lot of good answers to queens. Zealots, for example, are really good against queens and lings, whereas marines are not necessarily as good in the early game uh, in a, uh, a ZVT type situation. There's your pool, there's your extractor, and Sloverlord scouting. A laser says, that's really all I need. Just my Sloverlord. I trust him to do all of my scouting and bring me my scouting information. And considering the fact that Neeb's probably going to open up a depth here again, it seems like a solid strategy, honestly. At this level, sure, you might be able to expect an adept opening just because adept scouts are so good for Protoss. It really helps them get that scout beyond this initial probe scout. Um, I actually, let's see, quick shout out to the channel Hunter Starcraft. Uh, I'll put a link to it in the description. One of my subscribers started his own Starcraft channel. He's got good energy. He really understands the game pretty well for being a brand new caster. So check him out. But he was wondering how to scout after that first probe. And the answer is adept. That's what the pros do. They make a quick adept here. As soon as the cyber core is done, move it across the map, Sonic transfer it across, you'll get a nice little mid-early game scout to see what that tech structure is, it's the roach horn, if there's a lair, and then you can uh, subsequently define your strategy based on what you see from your opponent. Although Neeb says, I don't need that, I'm opening Stargate. Stargate is real good, because I can oracle kill stuff, I can use my phoenix to destroy the scouting slower lord, which really gets on my nerves from time to time. Yes, that is how Neeb does it. Third hatch getting thrown down by a laser, recognizing, hey, this is a one hatch opening. This cyber core is just finishing, which means there's no crazy double proxy gate happening from Neeb. I don't have to worry about it. So here comes our Adept, pushing out across that map. And is it going to be an Oracle from the Stargate? We'll have to wait and see. And not wait very long, because it is an Oracle. Wow, he made me wait for a second there. This Oracle's name is Katrina. A Terran rebel who fights for the Protoss, she was an expert Banshee pilot in the Dominion and had over 15 kills before her craft was shot down. The Daylom decided to put her in an Oracle and now, can her reputation hold up? I don't know man, that's a really good Banshee pilot to get 15 kills. Hmm. So double adept, actually doing a bit of harassment at the frontier, not so much the scouting. Ah, just Sonic transferring in to do the scout and then canceling the Sonic transfer to make sure the adepts are not trapped inside a Zerg base and dying. 
They recognize there are a lot of lings out, so they said, if we just stick ourselves in the corner of these minerals, we won't die. And they were correct. So Oracle moving out. Depth's coming on in here too. Overlord scouting does see the Stargate opening. Recognizes he is sacrificial. He's going to die because that is definitely a phoenix. You can see the outline of the phoenix in there. You see that? Yeah. A little tricky, but if you know what you're looking for, it makes sense. Adept's trying to take down this third base, which is just kind of hilarious because they will never kill a third base by themselves. Uh, they just don't do enough damage, uh, especially against non-light stuff. Yep, Phoenix killing the Sloverlord. Once again, not really waiting to throw down his tech until the Sloverlord is gone as need. Although, maybe he was because the Twilight Council and this other gateway are here inside the main. Oracle, where are you going? Where are you going, Katrina? Just kind of flying about, about here and there, trying to see what's going on. Spore Crawler up in both of his mineral lines. Third one coming up with the third base. And a Rotorin from a laser this time. We didn't see that in game number one. He's possibly trying to mix things up here against Neve, which is probably advised. Probably something you want to do against somebody as terrifying as Neve is mix up your strategies. Try the same thing every time. Neve could probably be ready for it. Right? And that's something that we looked at in the previous CVP in 4.0.2. Showtime versus... Uh, I don't remember anything anymore. Showtime versus somebody. And it was... Maybe it was a laser. It might have been Showtime versus a laser. As Double Oracle, again, sinking on into the main base, killing some drones. Not as many to pay themselves off, but that's okay. Four drone kills. But it was basically just little 10-minute Hydra pushes with Banelings and Lings, and Showtime couldn't stop it for the most part. It was really interesting. Uh, however, it looks like Neve may have solved that. The laser's not trying to do that here. He kind of went for it in game number one, but it wasn't super committed. He'd expanded as well there. The time did not come as early, but it's perhaps he knew that Neeb knows how to handle it. So, hmm. It might just be a case of Neeb knowing how to handle things a little bit better. Ah, there's the Phoenix lift and the Oracle kill. What, three Oracles? Wow, Neeb is upping up really aggressive. With three Oracles, 11 extra drones getting killed. 15 killed in the first five minutes of this game. It is 54 to 44 Harvesters. Neeb is definitely up right now. Wow, Queens, Roaches, Hydralisk Den now coming in for a laser, recognizing, okay, I really need Hydras, but look at these Adepts. They're getting Resonating Glaives, too. This could be a fake out from Neeb. Now look at me going Sky Toss. Woohoo! Make some Hydras to try and stop me, and then a bunch of Adepts coming in with plus one attack and Resonating Glaives and just wreck. Seems moderately possible here. Oh, Ling's trying to take down this third base of Neeb that's working in, but enough Adepts are here that I think can chase them away. A couple of probes die, but that's not too bad. Flying into the main base again. Is this another lift and kill scenario? Oh, the queen tries to run. No, it gets lifted anyway. Spore crawler not focusing down the wounded oracle, but man alive. Seven more drones killed. Nine. Nine more drones killed. Ling's running into this third base, trying to get revenge, trying to avenge the deaths of their drones. A couple more probes die, but if you kill two probes every time you lose ten of yours, it's not great. 24 drones killed. Four probes killed thus far. Still, a laser's not down by that much. 55 to 61 harvesters, but again, a laser, if he's making drones when he doesn't want to be, he'd rather be making attacking units. That plays exactly into Neeb's strategies. It's exactly what Neeb wants. And he's also going for a robotics bay, so likely going to be Colossus here. If I had to take a wild guess, I would definitely say Colossus. Revelation keeps getting thrown down on this army. You can't do anything about this, really. If you're playing against a Protoss player with great control on their Oracles, 7 kills, 7 kills, 10 kills, wow. Wow. Katrina and friends are good at StarCraft. Ling's trying to do it again at the third base, and Eve says, no, you know what? I'm going to station most of my army here, so if you try to sneak in, bad things will happen. Nice wall at the natural. Really difficult for Ling's to get in there. A quick warp in can shut that thing down pretty quickly. Sneaking into the main base again. Triple Oracle, man. Yes, your queen. Spore crawler defense strategy is useless. Okay, one of the Oracles dies. But seven more drones instantly killed. Just instantly killed. 31 have been dead so far. This is really good. Three Oracle opening, man. Who knew? Who knew it was so great? Not me. Not me. Yep, Colossus with extended thermal lance here from Neeb. Fourth base. Morphing in for a laser in the top right-hand corner. Three gateways in production at once. Increasing that production as he continues to expand. Is Neeb. Lings again, trying to get into this mineral line, and oh, maybe I oh, thought about trying to pick off the robotics facility, but probes are a better, juicier target, and then running possibly to the natural. There's that warp in, not a warp in. Wow. All right, not a warp in. Couple it ups here at third base of a laser, trying to kill some stuff over there, too. 
Couple more probes getting target fired. Wings running into the main base. Trying to see stuff. And get killed by probes. Yeah, just thought that was going to happen there. So again, nine drones killed, three probes killed. This is an unsustainable growth. Unsustainable projection if you happen to be a laser right now. So it's time for me to push. He's got Adepts. He's got Colossus. He's got Sentries. He's got Immortals. He's ready to do this thing. Couple Oracles coming all the way home. I don't know why you'd go home. There's really nothing, nothing for you here, although you are severely injured, Katrina and remaining friend. Lurkers on the way from a laser. Lurkers do have the same range as Colossus. You can't sit back and pick them off from range. As it turns out, hallucinated Phoenix scouting on in, trying to see other additional bases. Don't know. Don't think that there are. A fourth base by Neve is actually coming up here. Not too far after a laser's fourth base has been landed. Blink being researched for the Neeb. Colossus count getting a little bit high for the Protoss player. He's got four of them. Got four of them. I don't think a laser knows about the Colossus. Has he seen him yet? I don't think he has. I don't know if Lurker's what you want, honestly, against Colossus. I mean, it's the same range. I don't know. Okay, well, he knows now. He's like, oh, hey, Colossus. Did, wow. Should I perhaps go for a Spire, or is it too late for that? I think I'll just burrow my Lurkers and say, hey, attack on into this. Got some Cross Bile from some Ravagers, too. Getting rid of these creep tumors. Ah, observer in a observer mode here at the front. Right at the front. Usually you don't see it that way, but uh, here we go. Attacking on corrosive vials coming from the north to the south here from a laser. One of the Colossus does end up falling. Lurkers burrowed in pretty darn good positions. I think he just need immortals, honestly, but he's still making Colossus here. I don't know if this is going to work out. I really don't, don't know if this is going to work out at all. But it does manage to force field in some Hydras and some Ravagers and take those guys out. A lot of his units are injured. For Neve, the Colossus is still alive with six kills, regenerating its health, but half of its available hit points. Whole hit points, anyway. Yeah, that's a Spire from the laser. He says, you know what I need? I need Corruptors. Corruptors are how we deal with Colossus. It's how we've dealt with Colossus since the Wings of Liberty. Nothing much has changed. And again, Hydras... The Hydras themselves are not going to be great here. The Adepts, the Stalkers, all going to be great. Oh, trying to pick off one of the Lurkers from distance. Roach Hydra running on in. Used to be a time Roach Hydra against Colossus with suicide, but not anymore. They buffed these guys and nerfed these guys, and now it's a little bit more of a balanced relationship. Maybe a little too balanced, Protoss players would say. Hydra's trying to flank against me, but unsupported. I don't know about this. Stalker, Colossus trying to get this thing done. Coming on in as a laser. Feels like he's got this, but two more Colossus sneaking in from the backside. Can the Lurkers get anything done here either? I don't know that they can. Where's your detection? Did you lose your detection? Uh, I don't know if he lost his detection, but he's somehow managing to kill the Lurkers anyway. I don't see an Observer with his army. Hmm, I don't know. The Laser's fifth base is forced to be canceled here. Neeb suddenly looking pretty strong, marching across the map here with the Stalkers. He's got plus two attack on his ground units. Colossus sharing that one as well. A small handful of Roach and Hydra Trying to stop this thing, but again, Neeb just looks like he's completely comfortable here. Wings and Hydra is trying to flank from the left side while some Hydras on the top side are doing it here too. Neeb looking absolutely in control, blinking on top of the Roaches. Drones forced to fight, but drones fighting against Colossus is never good. They did pick off one of the Colossus though. Can they get another one? <laughs> I don't think so. Roaches streaming on in, and that's a good game from Elaser. New laser was defeated. Neeb wins game number two, just leaving him one game away. Darn it, that was the wrong thing. One game away from clinching this thing. 3 0 a laser and moving on to the round of four. That would be amazing. Amazing. And don't think I wouldn't do it either. Don't think I wouldn't do it. If this was a 3 0, you would see more game time, more cast time at the end of this video with some ads in there too. So you would think, oh, yeah, well, clearly there are five games, but maybe there aren't. Maybe there aren't. You don't know. So quick little 12 minute there in game number two. 18,000 resources lost for Elazer and 12,300 for Neeb. Again, just incredible efficiency from this guy. 50 drones killed. 50 drones killed in the first 12 minutes. That'll do it. That'll do it most of the time. All right, game number three coming at you from Falcon Paladin in just a second. Welcome back to game number three of this best of five from WCS Leipzig, cast by Falcon Paladin. And let's check out game number three on Blackpink, the ladder edition. In the top right-hand corner of this map, we've got the blue Zerg player 
Down two games to zero, but not dead yet. His name is Elazer. And in the bottom left-hand corner, the red Protoss player looking supremely confident and in control. But not that in control. It is Neeb. All right, man. These guys coming at it again. Like two heavyweight boxers. Game two looked a little bit easier for Neeb. That three Oracle opening really threw Elazer for a loop there. He was not prepared for three Oracles and a Phoenix to be flying around killing his stuff. Neeb managed to keep his Oracles alive longer than perhaps even he expected to. And 50 drones killed. Some of those drone kills did come from the Colossus murdering drones in that final battle, so perhaps the numbers are inflated a bit. But still, good work. If you can kill drones against your Zerg opponent, you're going to be in a great spot. A wonderful spot, because that way, the laser and other Zergs need to use Larva for drones and resources for drones instead of for army units. That's it. It's a very simple principle. Larva can, are a resource. You can either use them for attacking units or drones. And if you have to use them to replace drones that have been killed, that slows down your army. It slows you down immensely. So, Neeb knows the secret, and now you do too. Trying to play the mineral game here. If there is a worker already on a mineral field, another one will not come on to try to harvest from it. So if you bring in a probe, for example, and have it be getting minerals, it'll try to get these drones to stop using it. Oh no, accidentally picked up a mineral patch, now the game's over. Now the game's over. Probe can't actually play the game anymore, but he can attack while he has minerals in his mouth, which is kind of weird. You think that would interfere with it, right? But it doesn't. I don't think he's going to lose this drone. Are you going to lose this drone? No, 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 no. He's not going in there. That'd be bad. Probe's already pretty injured. Close, close, but no cigar. Neeb, expanding. Got himself a cybernetic score. Got himself actually two gateways before Cybercore this time. Perhaps walling off. Perhaps walling off, feeling laser probably going to be a little bit more aggressive here in game number three. Sure, games one and two, we had some bling harassment a little bit here, but there was really nothing crazy coming out of Neeb's side of the map at any point. There's no attempt for drops, there was no super early Hydra pushes, no Road Ravager stuff, no Baneling bust attempted. Again, that's probably because Neeb is one of the best players on Earth for shutting down that early stuff, recognizing what it is, and preparing for it, and just making it useless to even try. That's how I would feel. If I was playing against Neve, I'd be like, you know what? Sometimes I like this little early ling attack at about three or four minutes, but Neve will know how to shut it down. I'm not even going to try. And then they get out macro and die instantly because I would be playing against Neve. Some lings get on through here. A little bit embarrassing. Oh, a couple probes die. Actually, one of them was wounded, I think, from that earlier attack that he instigated on that drone in the main base of the laser, but... Live by the sword and die by the sword, is I believe how they say it. So 31 to 28 harvesters, Neve is up, but that should not be the case. For long as the laser's third base is just about ready to complete. Still a Ling running around. Does manage to scout the Twilight Council as it finishes. He already knew because he saw it constructing. But whoa, Ling, oh, speed finishes. Speed finishes and then he dies. Wow, he got to experience speed quickly. Suppose, suppose he did. I guess while we're quiet here, quick plug for the podcast, The Falcon Paladin Hour. There's a link in the description. We do a podcast every week. It is me and Wade, an Australian. We talk about things, differences between Australia and America. Did you know that coolers in Australia are called Eskies? Which is actually a brand name by Coleman. It's actually kind of like Kleenex, where Kleenex is a brand name that has become kind of a product name. That's what Esky is in Australia. Hmm. Anyway, fun stuff. We talk about patch notes, we talk about StarCraft results, talk about a lot of stuff that way. Movies, TV, show, books. All sorts of exciting pop culture stuff. And we also have a Patreon reward. If you support us on Patreon, we will actually we give you access to Let's Play videos. We are tentatively calling Falcon and Wade Play Something. Right now we're playing Portal 2. And let me tell you, there are some good moments in our last playthrough of Portal 2. So check it out. Check out the podcast. Hit us up. Even donating just a dollar a month to support the podcast would be incredibly useful and gives you access to the Let's Play videos. So, hmm. If you want to check it out, Cooperative Portal 2 between two people who are a little bit trolly in games. Hilarity ensues, let me just tell you that. So anyway, that's the podcast. Link in the description. Falcon Paladin Hour. And laser pushing out with some lings. Dark Shrine coming in for Neeb. That is interesting. It's got to be for Archons, though. You really don't see Dark Templar at this level. But who knows? Could be Dark Templar, man. There is a Warp Prism coming right on over here. But again, it could be for Archon Drops. Ling's trying to do this little harassment thing at the front. Now that Photon Overcharge is gone, this Ling Pressure is a lot more effective. 
Previously, he would chuck down a photon overcharge and all these things would die. But now, Stalker dies. Now, he has to throw up additional pylons to deal with it. So annoying. The Cybercore might actually get taken out here. Meanwhile, Adept trying to attack at the front, but there are Roaches and Queens here. Archons trying to make this thing happen, trying to even the battle a little bit. Bonus damage versus everything present. Are the Lings and the Cybercore is going to die? That's not good. Adept's wandering into the main base of a laser, though. We've got attacks on both sides of the map right now. Drones getting target fired while Roach is killing the Adepts from behind. Came from behind. Ling's killing probes while Adepts trying to stop that. Probes actually fighting for their own lives, which is not what you want. Again, Speedlings. Ling's finally cleaned up. Adepts finally cleaned up. It looks like both sides of aggression are done. Or Prism, maybe not done. Maybe not done there, but four drones died and eight probes in the carnage. Oh, queen count. Pretty great here. Yeah, the Archons are stuck. They're going to kill these Queens. One more. Nope, had to pick it up and get out of there. Oh, but picked off by the Queen. Oh, Revenge. And Neeb with a good game. Whoa. Whoa. Neeb decides he's done at 6 minutes and 18 seconds. How? What? Hang on. Units tab. Oh. He had an Immortal and an Adept. Okay, hang on. Hang on. What happened to you, Neeb? I guess losing those probes was bad. And there was a big roach attack coming, which I think he anticipated on some level. Let's see. War Prison gets picked off. So no more harassment from him. This is the point where he taps out. No more harassment from him. He is down 45 to 42 harvesters. He can establish a third base because roaches have the map control. And all Neeb has right... I mean, right now, Neeb has nothing. He has unadept right here. Unadept, unimmortal. These roaches are going to come... I mean, there aren't many of them. There are exactly uh, nine. 9, 10, 11. 11 of them, counting his heart. Uh, so 11 roaches, but still against literally nothing for Neeb. He was counting on a lot for that Archon drop. Archon drop stuff, and losing those Archons and that War Prism was enough to make him say, throw up his hands and just be done. So Laser takes the game. Bit of a fluky win there, but hey, he needed it. He needed a fluky win. I can tell you that much. Okay, so that's it for game number three. We'll come back with game number four from Falcon Paladin in just a second. Welcome back to our best of five today on this series Sunday. In the bottom left-hand corner here on game number four between Elazer and Neeb is the red Protoss player from Ting and the United States of America. It is Neeb. And his opponent far, far away in the top right-hand corner. It's going to be the blue Zerg player, Elazer. Elazer. Oh, man. I don't know. Do you feel good about that one if you're a laser? You're like, yeah, I picked off the warp prism and he tapped out. But I mean, it was a little lucky. I don't know. There was skill. There was a lot of skill there, but it just kind of felt like... Nah, the laser outplayed him. The laser outplayed Neeb there. Let's just not make it any more complicated than it is. Quick plug for the Gauntlet Global Open. I will be casting that today with just Jordan at twitch.tv slash gauntletsc2 at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Come say hello. We've had some really great players show up recently. Avalo was there last week. We've had Lozira come in. We've had Snoot play as well. Scarlet's come in before. Specials actually played in the tournament and done exceptionally well. It is a global open, and so we get players ranging from Master to GM to Pro, and it's just a good time. You see a lot of good strategies. Local celebrities like Mini Titan have competed in the global open before. So check me out. Watch me last. Uh, watch me cast some live StarCraft, 6 p.m. Eastern, today, at twitchtv sc 2 Again, link in the description. Hmm, is that a pool first from a laser? That was a pool first from a laser, and he's just going. Oh, he's taking the gold. He's taking the gold. He knows. He says, "All right, I gotta win this too. I can't rest back on my laurels. If I don't win this game as well, I'm done. I've had my back against the ropes since losing game number two. So." Three and four have got to be mine if I'm going to force a game at number five. Neeb wants to win it now. The longer this go game goes on, the more drawn out it is, the more tired he gets. It is hard to play StarCraft at this level, people. Look at this APM. 400 right now for a laser, a full 300 for Neeb. It is just, even this early, their fingers are moving, their eyes are moving. They're thinking in a million miles a minute. It is a tiring, tiring thing to do. Drones mainerning over to this gold base location. The timing for a laser is impeccable, as you would expect. Ling's coming in from a laser, too. This, okay, this isn't a weird walling off map, is it? No, you just have this. You have this wide ramp at the mouth of the natural. And a lot of dead space to Ling drop, though. Oh, boy. 
A lot of dead space to ling drop. That might... Where's his where is overlord going? Nope, that's not a ling drop overlord. Absolutely not. No way, Jose. Probe scouting. Queen and lings are out. Probe says, what is this? What is this madness? Did he go hatch first? No, did not, but has this gold. So he knows there's not a base here. Oh, he did scout this. He did scout the gold. All right, so Neve's on top of things. He knows. The gold is up. He's on a bit of a timer here. A two basing gold Zerg player is fairly scary. That income starts to ramp up very, very quickly, which lets them drone up very, very quickly, which lets their army get up very, very quickly. It is a domino effect. It is essentially a domino effect here. All right, gateway, gateway, gateway. Three gates here for Neeb. Yeah, three gates and a resonating glaives. All right, so we're going to see some heavy adept pressure here with a resonating glaives upgrade. And taking his natural is a laser, so he'll be a three base zerg, one gold. Really has nothing right now, has five lings. And he's going for a baneling nest. Oh, the baneling nest is the perfect counter. Oh, no. Sloverlord sees everything, because again, nothing that Neeb is making can shoot up. Zero things can shoot up. Still not making any stalkers. Okay, so did he really scout this? He did. He scouted the Twilight Council. He saw the lack of a robotics facility. He saw the lack of a Stargate. I'm just going to say this. Neep has not gone Oracle in the last three games now. And I feel like maybe that's been hurting him. I don't know. I feel like maybe it's hurt him. Or last two games, right? Yeah, the two games prior to this one. Maybe? Yeah, it was something like that. Anyway, Oracles, man. Oracles are good. I don't know why you went away from them. But, jeez, Banelings, with their extra damage versus lights. Uh, adepts are light, as it turns out. I don't have a lot of hit points. 140, sure, that seems like a whole ton. Oh, no. Oh, no. The Lings got in. What is going on, Neeb? How is that not walled off? This little four-minute attack of Zerglings, like I said. There it is. Good. Now that Photon Overcharge is gone. Okay, there are Adepts trying to stop this thing. Uh, adepts on the other side, too. Oh, did they get Banelinged? Hold up. Gotta get that. Alright, so Adept's moving out. Ling's gonna sneak on in. Let's not miss it here. Yep, Ling's causing problems for Neeb over on his natural base. Adept's rolling in and... Oh, he get blindsided by... Oh, he's trying to run from the Banes, but he's getting surrounded, is he? Yep, Bane Ling's getting some nice hits, wounding a lot of those Adept's. They're forced to do absolutely nothing. Over on a laser side of things. Where are the adepts? Why aren't they stopping this probe slaughter? I don't know, but some more adepts do manage to get on in. They've got their resident glaives, which is pretty scary, but lings and queens, lings and queens all the live long day. How are their sorcerer sort of lings doing stuff in the natural base right now? How is this even possible? Because they're fast. Because they're fast and adepts are kind of slow. All right, so a laser held that one fairly handily, I would say. It did lose five drones, uh, and only eight probes got lost. I don't know. That could have been a lot worse for Neeb. If you're a Protoss, you've experienced the terror of... 50 Zerglings. Okay, it feels like 50, but it's closer to probably 12. Getting inside your natural base and just destroying your entire mineral line. But Neeb somehow escapes with 8 probe losses. 8. He's still going for the Adepts. He knows there's Banelings out, too. He saw them. As he feel like he can't tech up to anything? He's not building any more product. Okay, he's got double Stargate. So he's going Adept Phoenix. Almost like it's against the Terran back in early Legacy of the Void. Hmm, Hydralisk Den for a laser Zergling, trying to get that surround action up. Are there enough of them, though? No, look at the look at the sacrifice of those Lings, the slaughter of those Lings. Adepts doing a great job, actually. Can we pull this thing off? Even though he's going Adept versus Bangling. I don't know, man. I honestly don't know if he can. He's just kind of hanging out. He doesn't really want to commit. Is he waiting for the Phoenix to come in? Where are they? Phoenix are here. They're looking for overlords. They're looking for drop attempts. Are they going to commit? Nope. No committing because there's Banelings right there. Right there. More Banelings coming in for a laser. He has a total of six. He's getting three more. Nine Banelings seems like a pretty good number to handle this. Now, the goal is to surround the Adepts so they can't run and then walk the slow Banelings into them. It is traditionally a strategy used against Terran where you get Lings behind the uh, Marines so they can't kite. But even they can target fire the Banelings from a distance, as, you know what, Neeb can too. Try to target fire these Banes just like a Terran player would, and then Sadik transferring away. They've got a bit more mobility than Marines have, as it turns out. Overlords getting picked off by a lot of Adepts here, but the Laser's got so many Hydras. Now, in general, if there are mm, fairly equal numbers of Hydras and Phoenix, they can lift and kill pretty easily. 
But in the case where the uh, Hydra account gets really high, I don't know if you want to finish this. I don't know if you want to finish this. Okay, good. Didn't want to finish this, but here's some lift on the Banelings and killing them. Does that actually hurt them? I don't think it does. I don't think Baneling Splash does anything in the sky here. All right, Overlord finish picking up those Hydras. As I said, remember, picking up Hydras. Picking up Hydras, picking up Queen. Sport Crawler trying to do stuff here. Adepts here at this third base location. Bing Ling's getting some nice hits on those Adepts, though. Ling's coming to the backside. Hydras trying to finish off these Phoenix. Yeah, the Phoenix Cloud is actually fairly high, but Elijah just pumping those guys out. A couple drones have died. He does manage to save his third base location. The Adepts do finish the transfer here into the main base, too. Uh, again, lifting up the Queens. The Phoenix really has some fantastic utility here. Bailing trying to finish off those adepts again. The target firing from distance doing some good work, but eventually the adepts are finished off. Phoenix are effectively unopposed right now, though. Uh, they're fast. They can lift and kill everything that Neep has, plus that bonus damage. Oh, careful. Losing two is not good. Losing two to these Hydras was not good. They don't even have the muscular augments. Oh, they do have muscular augments. They do. They just looked slow there for a second. Don't know what it was. Hydras rolling into Neeb's attempt at a third base to warp in. Oh, it doesn't have anything here. Some adepts are trying to stop this thing. So many lings rolling in. Phoenix coming back. Adepts coming back. And retreat. The lings get out of there. Resources lost to this point are 40, 54, 5400 compared to 41 for Neeb. Baneling morphing right at the front and actually getting lifted and killed by these Phoenix a little bit. But this Hydra Baneling thing, this is more of what we saw in this previous ZVP series that I cast between Showtime and I want to say it was a laser, but I don't know. I honestly do not know. I just know it was good. Adepts, Banelings saying, if you want to finish that transfer, you are hereby welcome to. Oh, <laughs> And then the Hydras are pretty much unopposed at the front here. Banelings wandering into this mineral line. <laughs> 10 probes have been killed thus far. 12 probes, and that's a good game from Neeb. <laughs> he is defeated and the laser is victorious. Ow. Ow. I mean, you're, you're saying, Falcon, you're a Zerg player. What do you care? I know what it's like to lose your whole army to Banelings. I know. I absolutely know. And it's 97 to 67 total supply. Banelings getting in that mineral line. As all that's left here are these Phoenix against this many Hydra. And yeah, that's it. Neep taps out. So we've got ourselves a Games 5, ladies and gentlemen. Between <laughs> Laser and Neeb, we got there. Didn't look good. Didn't think we'd get there when uh, Neeb went up 2-0, to zero, but we made it. But we made it, nevertheless. Oh, all right. Bit of a breather. Bit of a breather. Going to take a quick drink break that you don't have to experience. And we'll be back with game number five, the rubber match between a laser and Neeb from WCS Leipzig in just a second. Game number five of this best of five between a laser and Neeb will be held on Acid Plant, the latter edition. You'll note that I did not say Acid Planet, even though my brain absolutely wanted to. In the top left-hand corner of game number five, we will have the Blue Zerg player. His name is Elaser. And in the bottom right-hand corner, the Red Protoss player, Neeb. Neeb, what happened, man? You went away from Oracles. That's what happened. You were up 2-0. You were killing it. Then you stopped going for Oracles. I stopped using my names, and that was it. Last three games have been really unsteady for you. And two losses as well. So I, I recommend you open up Oracle. I'm giving advice to Neeb, who is one of the best Protoss players on Earth. Uh, that's cool. It's just how I roll. Just how I happen to roll. One more plug for the cast. Yes, there's a Patreon for the Falcon Paladin channel. Many of you are already patrons. Thank you so much to each and every one of you for doing that. It's a good, it is a good feeling to know that you are willing to throw your dollars behind this channel. Uh, link in the description, link at the end of the cast here as well if you'd like to support the channel. Uh, there is a bit of an apocalypse that goes on on YouTube every January and February. It drops my ad revenue by approximately 30%. It's not a great feeling, but uh, yeah, that's what's going on right now. It does kind of steadily tend to grow through the rest of the year. Then December's great, then January is a crash again. It's really weird. Anyway, if you feel like supporting, but I do also have reward tiers. Check me out at patreon.com slash falcon paladin and get some stuff done. Also, suggestions for Patreon tiers are always welcome. Might do some Let's Plays myself. 
of some other stuff and throw that up as a reward if that's popular. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if you guys want to watch me play other games. I know that's something Husky tried to do. He actually set up a separate channel called Husky Plays where he played stuff like Warcraft 3 and played stuff like Half-Life and things. And I don't know that it ever got nearly as popular as his StarCraft channel did, but I don't know. Some people enjoyed it, so maybe that's you. Maybe you want to see me play some other stuff. Maybe you love me but are tired of StarCraft. Is that possible? I'm not tired of StarCraft. Anyway, enough of that. Enough of that. How are we opening? What are we doing here? Stargate? Yes. Yes. Stargate from Neeb. My advice was heated. Overlord scouts in, says, hey, that's an adept. That's not a stalker. He can't kill me. I am the most confident overlord of all time. And a solo overlord, no less. A laser? There we go. I was going to say, third base timing is about now, and it is. Boop. Third base coming down here on Acid Plant. I haven't cast many games on this map, but it's a little dour. It's a little dark and dismal, and got this. I mean, it looks like water pouring out of those grates, but it's pouring into water that is absolutely green and murky. So I wonder if there's just enough of it. Oh, that water stopped pouring. Uh, oh, that's because the Overlord went by. There was vision on this. Okay, so the water only pours if there's actively something watching it. I love that that's the case with some of the doodles, with some of the uh, little map features on StarCraft II maps. Yes, this water is totally pouring. You can see the top and bottom. They're splashing, but the water is frozen. It's frozen solid. Anyway, Depth's coming up here from Neve. It is an Oracle. Oracle's name is Probe. This is an attempt to fool the enemy intelligence made by the Nezarim tactician. If a transmission is intercepted, the only thing they will know is that the probe is coming. And they won't be ready. Oh, they'll think it's a probe, but it's actually it's actually an Oracle. Interesting. It's got like a deception cloak or something like that. So it's again, it's double Oracle here. Neve, if he's gonna make one Oracle, he's gonna make two, at least, and sometimes even three. Sometimes even three. All right, Oracle Probe moving across the map here, trying to see what damage she can toss down. And, oh, are you actually going to kill an egg? I'm going to say, I don't know if you have the DPS to kill an egg. Those have a lot of armor. Yeah, Queensling shoving this away. Maybe actually might, or does, and actually gets the refund on that. That was amazing. I don't think I've ever seen an Oracle kill an egg before that's, that's hatching. Hmm. Overlord scouting in, says, mm -hmm, there's your Phoenix. Is that a, uh, that's your two Oracles. So two Oracle Phoenix opening here from Neep. Might go for a third. I don't know. Seems entirely possible. A laser cannot die to this. You can't lose 50 drones again after doing that in game number two. Can't allow it. Lings do see where the Oracles are, which is a nice bit of lucky scouting. Slower Lords actually going to scout this one here too. So two Oracles are out. You need to be more prepared than this. Queen on the outskirts is nice. You get extra shots before the oracles come in, which makes them wary of coming all the way in. So that's nice. Ling's trying to see if there's a third base warping in. Yes, he sees the third base right as it's starting to come in here. And then just keep on moving. Keep moving. Nothing to see here. Oh, the water's pouring again because we can see it. Hello, water. Welcome back. Welcome to the land of the living Mm -hmm. Hydralisk Den on the way from a laser. I think he's made a Hydralisk Den in every game, which I can't necessarily blame him for. Hydras are really good. All right, so it's the Phoenix Oracle thing. How many queens? Oh, about two. Almost had two spores. Yeah. All right, so Probe and Company. Five. Five drone kills. Pretty much exactly what he wants there. That second spore. If it had been done a little bit earlier, that's a different story. I don't know if you want to finish this, Adept. Adept, I don't know. Oh, that was close. They almost transferred into a ton of lings with queen support. Would have just died. Might have been in the end of the game there for me, but he was very smart and chose to cancel that transfer. Just at the last second, just because he can, just because he's Neeb. That's all he is. Muscular arguments on the way from the laser. Working on a robotics facility. Immortals have also been very good for Neeb in this series. Games where he makes immortals, he tends to win too. So I like it. He's doing all the things. He's doing all the things he wants to do, all the things that have led success. Yeah, double spore queen is what you need. Okay, so two oracles, Zerg players, you need... Two spores and a queen, or two queens and a spore, something. Three anti-air things. You can't do it with just two. It's not going to work out. Ling's trying to roll into that third base. They get a couple probe kills, and then two of them flee for their lives. Ah, got our caught with our hands in the cookie jar. A laser going lurker den. Robotics Bay coming up from Neeb once again. So, feeling all right. Feeling okay, I think, is Neeb right now. This feels like a repeat of game number two a little bit, where Neeb won. Drone, oh, finishes the Adept transfer, getting surrounded by Ling's drones, fighting two. 
And are, are they? Oh, yeah. Hydro support. I think all the easy ups are dead. But they are taking a lot of drones with them. And by they're all dead, I mean they're not all dead. Some of the transfer into the main mineral line, too. Oh, adapts with resonating waves, man. You are great. You are so good at killing stuff like drones. So that's 16 drones killed. It's not 50. It's not 50. But we're not there yet. It's only seven minutes into the game. We can be patient. We can be patient. Stasis wards up here for Neeb, which is hilarious. Here it is, third base location. I love Stasis Ward. It's fun. It's really fun. One of the cheese games from the last cheese compilation about 10 days ago now, it was a mass charge lot Stasis Ward play. And it worked pretty well. It was nuts. He just flew over to the main base of the Zerg, warped in a ton of charge lots, and then tossed down stasis wards. And any time the Zerg tried to get in close to the Zealots to kill them, they got stasis. <laughs> it was hilarious. Man, creative Protoss play is something I really enjoy. Need more of that. Need more of that in the cheese compilation, man. All right, Hydra's running around for a laser. They've been revealed, but now they're not revealed. Oop, killing the drone that was trying to go for a fourth base. Another drone is tasked with the thankless job of trying to expand out into the unforgiving reaches of acid plant colossus more charge templar archives almost done that storm that archon honestly protoss players if you're in i don't know mid rake madness into the void level just make archons and high templar and just throw storms around to make archons and a move them you're gonna do well against zerg those two things splash damage and bonus damage bonus splash damage versus zerg well versus biological but everything zerg has is biological it's just great Really great. Make those units. They are good units. In the low levels especially. And in the high levels. As Neeb is using them. Fourth base warping in for Neeb. A little bit exposed. And there's an army coming. So that's not great. Uh, where can the army... You're going the wrong way. Oh, okay. Pulling back to deal with this army of Neebs. Stalker. Colossus. Immortal. Sentry. Zealot. Charge on the way. Not done yet. This third base by lasers in a ton of trouble. Can he get it, actually? Guardian shield popped... Oh, empty drop lords trying to make him feel like there's bailings in there, but no. Stasis warding or recalling out after killing that third base was brilliant. I like this from a laser though. Drop lords forcing me back, forcing him to flee when he maybe didn't have to. Oh no, no, no! Fleeing there was probably smart. The thing about being recalled out is there is that time where you're blue, and you can be killed before the recall takes you home. So uh, it's a little nerve-wracking. Can you imagine you're fighting and then suddenly you're paralyzed, but you can see the army around you and they're slashing at your face and shooting spines at you and you're dying and you're dying and you can't do anything about it? It's terrible. That's a nightmare. That is a nightmare for sure. All right, lurkers burrowing on in. Neeb pulling back. Does not like these lurkers. Drop stuff coming, though. The thing is, they had to reveal themselves a little bit early. Neeb knows that a laser's got drop lords and that... Kind of keeps the laser from being able to do too much, I think. Yeah, I mean, they're unloading. The laser says, mm, yeah, yeah, fine. I thought maybe Neeb didn't notice that they were drop wards, but he did. But he absolutely did. Phoenix got a kill. Fleeing from the million hiders on the ground right now. 176 to 178 total supply. It is very even. Very, very even. Guardian shield up. Archon dies here at this third base location. Trying to poke in. Towards the fourth base, too. The army pretty split from Showtime, though. Oh, man. Attacking on two fronts right now. The Immortals, pretty great. Pretty good number there. Attack one is still going on for a laser, but attack two is absolutely shoved back right now. Does he have the detection? Charge lots on top of those. Oh, on top of those lurkers. And then surrounding on two sides. And from the backside, too, got some Hydras trying to go it alone, but just too much stuff. Just outnumbered severely. Are these drop wards all going to die is my question right now. Ling's trying to distract, and the laser with a good game. Well played in 10 minutes and 45 seconds. And laser is out, and Neeb is your winner in five games. Five games in this best of five. It is as hard fought as you can possibly get, but Neeb managed to make it happen. Managed to make it happen. I mean, a laser threw a lot at that attack. Did not do nearly enough damage. And he knew it, too. And he knew it. Losing that third base was cruel. It was a cruel blow. He's down 73 to 65 total harvesters. He's got 8 hydras and 17 lings available. That's it. 8 hydras and 17 lings versus an archon, a colossus, 6 immortals, 3 zealots, 4... Adepts, eight stalkers, couple oracles still flying around out there, probing friends, still doing stuff. Whew. And it was four base to four base. He knew. It was a downhill battle. I mean, 
at the lower leagues, it probably would have taken some more time before the Zerg player tapped out. But the writing was on the wall. So great game. Great series by Neeb. Making it happen for all you Protoss fans out there. Do love to see that. Love to see my Protoss fans happy. And let's go ahead and do a quick check. Quick check here. And resources lost. Going to be 10,700 for a laser. And f f f math is hard. 6,000. 6,000 resources lost for Neeb. So again, just so cost efficient. Didn't lose his Colossus. Nope. Made one Colossus. Kept it. How many kills do you have, Colossus? Can I see? 11. Not bad. Not bad. Let's see. Two Archons died, but 11 Lurkers killed is so much gas. 27 Hydras, too. 73 Lings. 27 Hydralisks. Did I say that? I think I did. I'm repeating myself, but that's because it is currently 11 p.m. And I'm wrapping this up. So that's going to be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another daily Legacy of the Void upload. A best of five series this time around. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter. Facebook, and a Patreon, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.